Hi everyone, I want to spend these next few minutes with you talking about fire safety. I want to first start about something that's happened in my own life. Sunday evening, my smoke detectors went off. At the same time, I could smell something that had triggered them. I initially thought that I left the rice cooker on in my kitchen, but it was off. And so I immediately called the emergency phone number for where I live and had the fire department to my home. They couldn't find anything wrong. After they left, I got talking to a friend of mine that's a licensed electrician. I could smell something that's not normal from my computer network router and the plastic of it had become discolored. It's the probable cause of this, although it's hard to know for sure. So what I wanted to spend a few minutes with you is getting you to think about what your plan is. So if it happens, you know that's what you're going to do for whatever your situation is. I would First and foremost, make sure that you have the phone number for the emergency services where you live on your phone and also like wrote down somewhere that's very easily accessible like by an entrance to your home, especially if it's a non-standard number. So where I live, the emergency number is 911. I use a voice over IP phone service. There is support for this in for the service provider that I have. You need to find out if you use voice over IP, can you reach an operator to dis or to, like to direct your call to the local fire department or ambulance or police if there's an emergency happening and you need their help. I would also suggest that if you have a personal support worker coming into your home that you would talk over what the plan will be for their own safety and yours in the event that the smoke detectors go off and you're receiving help. So for example, if you're in the shower, how you're logistically going to get yourself out of the home so that you're safe. I'm not out to scare you by saying this. For me, if you've talked about it ahead of time and you have a plan, then it's going to be a whole lot easier than finding yourself in the situation and not really knowing what to do. There is a lesson that I learned from this on Sunday evening. It's obvious that I would want to have a cell phone to call the emergency services so I could physically get out of my home when the detector's going off, especially if the host was on fire. So obviously it's something I'm going to be looking into. I don't particularly need it for tons of talking time, but it would be handy to have and also keep by my bed if I had to call an ambulance for myself in the night. Another item that I want to talk about, you may have seen some of my other videos where I talked about the cleaning that I'm doing and the sorting and getting rid of what's not part of my life now. You need to make sure that your home is accessible for your needs and that you're regularly cleaning up after yourself and not collecting stuff that's not relevant to your life. I realize how hard this has been 
just for myself and I can't imagine what some people would go through who have left less function in their hips, their knees, or with something else that's wrong with their body. Where I live, there's a central volunteer coordination center. If you legitimately are needing help, I would encourage you to reach out to them or area churches where someone may be able to give a few hours to help you either get on top of it or have a very specific plan of what you would be taking care of at that time and then just start working through it. The idea is first off in practical terms there's only a set amount of possessions that you need that are part of your life or are going to be part of your life during the coming months if you're doing some planning ahead. The other part of this is making your home not feel like it's a burden to you. In other words, keeping it clean and organized, especially if you're someone that has to spend a lot of time inside your home, just so that you won't feel weighed down and that you can enjoy your home, especially on the days when you're feeling weak or if you're feeling vulnerable. I want to also highlight the needs for a wheelchair. You're going to make it easier for yourself getting around your home if there's a space to you know, drive your wheelchair up or backwards and turn around basically a three-point turn and be able to do what you need to do without a huge hassle each time you go to do the specific chores. You know, the idea of having the wheelchair is to uplift your life, to give you independence, and to improve your quality of life. So taking care of your home is part of that commitment that comes with having a wheelchair. If the cleanings got ahead of you and you do need help, there's no shame in asking for help. It would be better off to ask for help than to find yourself just swamped and really struggling. The final part of this is the practical logistics of your day-to-day -day life making sure that you're not setting yourself up for failure. So when I had my surgery in 2015, the physiotherapy that followed it wore me out. You know, I'd go do an hour of using a pool and literally the next two days I would be in bed recovering just to do the same thing over and over again. During that time, when I warmed my meals up, I used my oven, and the reason I used my oven is because it has a timer. So if I fell asleep, the oven was still gonna, sh gonna shut itself off in a specific amount of time. It's something that I want you to think about. A microwave option would be another practical answer or else if you're just going through something that's going to last for a you know, defined period, like if you have a joint replacement surgery, you maybe need a lot of help for two weeks. But at the two week mark, if you're expected to recover, I've found that people can make themselves available for the short term to help you get through something. It's harder where it's an ongoing or a chronic condition. It takes more manpower to help you through something that's life-changing or ongoing. So making arrangements ahead of time for someone to bring meals to you would be an option for you. Again, it's just something I want you to think about so that you don't leave a burner on and risk damage to your home. I also want to mention 
I have a fire extinguisher in my kitchen. It's accessible. It covers the different types of fires. I would encourage you to have one and to keep it current. If you need to use it, that you indeed are able to do so. Just a few things that I've been thinking about. There obviously is more to this. The fire department was happy to come to my home. They weren't by any means upset with me for having called them after the detector went off. I've found that doctors and professionals respond well to proactive questions. Like, for example, I went to my family doctor when, when we found out that my dad was terminally ill and said, my dad's got liver cancer. What could I do for myself at my age that would give me the best chance of remaining healthy for the rest of my life? And just that long-term planning, and he gave me a few ideas. I would encourage you that if you have questions, that you could talk it over, make a list of them, maybe check with a friend that they're reasonable questions, that they're understandable, and then if you need to go to the fire department because you're needing to know something, or I've contacted local police before too, there's no shame in asking for the help that's needed, or to be open to be redirected to the correct resource that's available for you. Okay, I hope this will help you think through your life, not scare you, but if you have a plan and you find yourself in that situation, it's just a lot easier to respond instead of either having a shutdown or feeling really frightened and just not being able to communicate well. I want to thank you for this time that you spent with me today. Bye for now.